right, this is the robot. Uh, this is going to be an instructional video that will not be very polished um, or edited very, the editing will not be very polished. Obviously you can already see this is just going to be me talking and walking through the components, how they're wired together, generally speaking how they work together, and then um, so I'll do that for this and this is a cover which it has some of these electrical components on top this is the receiver and it talks to the transmitter here this is the lidar this is the, the um, survey grade antenna from Swift Navigation that's going to be connected to this the Pixie Multi from Swift Navigation and then down here is our backup GPS, right here, from Ready to Sky. It's just a regular GPS, whereas the Swift Navigation one can do the RTK GPS. So I'm going to show you how to put this cover on here. Um, but first, before getting into the cover, let's look at the robot itself. So this switch turns power on from these batteries to this motor controller and you can see that these uh, two wires the small red and black one go to the black one comes to this the red one comes to the switch so these batteries are in parallel so that there's 24 volts total it's very critical not to hook these up in the wrong order. There's a little, you can't see the signs, but there's a B plus positive and a B negative. So always make sure the negative is in the negative. Now, um, let me show you. So these um, batteries can be charged, and at the time of this video, um, the chargers are in here. Battery charger. I'll let you, uh, you know, figure that out. You can buy it, and uh, or you can uh, look at the instructions that come with it. Um, it's pretty simple to work. But this is a regenerative mo regenerative motor controller. So every time these motors are in reverse, it recharges the battery. So I've never had to charge the batteries because. When you're turning on this robot, if you're turning to the left, the right motors are going forward and the left motors are going backwards. So, you know, you go backwards even when you're turning, the motors do. Okay, so um, and these, this motor um, down here, you can see um, that white wire in the background is connected to this motor right in here and then that line and I'll just show you that line comes up into here so right now my right motors are M1 A and M1 B and the left motors are M2 A and M2 B okay so right motors left motors that's the motor control system. Um, the, these batteries are only connected to the motor controller. They're not connected to the Pixar. That's to reduce noise. So I, that's my understanding anyways. Um, I guess there's also this side. I'm trying to get the camera in a good spot here. So these wires are connected to the Pixhawk output. You have tan is your signal wire, brown is your ground, and red is your um, power. Now for this configuration, we are not using power. So these, are, these come here, and even though you saw the red connected there, I stop the, the wire, the red wire stops right here. So you are, I am only using brown, which is ground, and yellow, which is signal. 
And these are my uh, switch positions. So number one is low, two and three are high, four and five are low, six is high. You can, this is the Sabertooth dual 12 amp motor controller. You can Google that and find the data sheet for it to see what wild the switches are in that position. Uh, okay, so back to the yellow and brown wire. The signal on the ground. That is right, connects right here into the pick sock. So this is the main out channels one and three. Make sure you get the, this right. Ground is on top the way that the little pick sock is oriented here, and the signal wire is on the bottom. Okay, the middle pin on channel 3 and the middle pin on channel 1 are not connected because that's for power, but we don't need power. Okay? Well, and while we're here, oh, so channel 1 right now, I, I can't remember which. So, the, so channel 1 is, let me figure this out real fast. Channel 1 I have connected to S2. So, this is S2 and you can see it uh, better when things aren't connected says on the bottom. Far right is S2, next to it is S1, then you have 5 volts and 0 volts. Okay. So, um, if, uh, yeah, channel 1 and channel 3 will go over a little bit more in the, uh, once we get to the, um, Mission Planner software. We'll go over more what that means in Mission Planner software. So, okay, so when, while we're talking about those signals, here on the PIXOC, we have ground power and signal coming from RC in. Okay. This will be connected to the RC receiver in here, which if you read my thesis paper, you can you can see what kind of receiver I got. It has to have, it has to be the S bus kind of receiver, so that channels one and three can be transmitted from here. Okay, I'll turn this on right now, and we can go over it. So channels one and three have to be transmitted from these sticks over over one wire. Okay, so they get transmitted, the receiver picks it up here, comes in to, it's processed in the receiver, and it has to leave on one wire, even though there's two channels, and only a receiver with serial bus communication can do that. So, just, uh, these are connected into the pick sock on the RC in pin. Alright, so... Throttle not idle. Okay. Here I've selected my pick sock. You, if you want to select, you can scroll this way. Select, but I've already selected it. So there we go. If we go to page, it will toggle us through our setup. Make sure you read the instruction manuals to get all these settings right. But the main thing I want to talk about is here on 5. So I have set up as the aileron will be the rudder. The elevator is throttle. Throttle is the elevator. Rudder is the aileron. Okay, I'm going to interject here because um, it, my explanation didn't make a lot of sense. So basically on this inputs, page you're saying okay my aileron signal I'm actually going to control with the switch that's called rudder uh, that's that's uh, hopefully helps a little bit understand this um, this setup 
if you don't understand it, just copy the settings that you see here. And if you copy the way I've done everything else in Mission Planner, then it will work. And, and here's our mixer. It's set up as AETR. Now, if you want to go back, let me go back to number five. Here, this says E50 because I have it as exponential, so it's not, I can't remember which one the rudder is. Uh, I, so this might be the wrong stick for the rudder, but. Um, so that normally if your scale is zero to 100, this would be zero, this would be 50, this would be 100. E is, I have it set up as exponential so that um, it responds exponentially, so linearly. linearly. And you'll know if you, everything is working on this system well because this won't have any errors and the receiver, which you can't see right now because it's inside of this box, will be green. Okay, so let's turn that off. Oh, you have to hold it down to turn it off. Okay. Um, next, this GPS, the backup GPS, has these six pins. They're color coded. These get connected to um, this six pin wire or six cable wire. The colors should line up. So when you plug them in, just line up the colors. So it's GPS. So that's why it's coming out of the GPS port, but it's also a compass, and the compass uses the I2C port. So I've, you know, spliced them all together. So it's just one nice connection. Next is, whoops, the uh, Pixie Multi will plug into this guy. So he will come in through here like that, and he will plug in here. Okay. Sweet. Um, this is the LiDAR. Okay, connection port underneath right here. And that is this cable. It says Italo Engineering, that's where we bought it from. It is in the telemetry. It is in the telemetry 2 port. Okay, so this wire will come up. I have it come up and out this hole, and then they're routing it to here. That's how I do it. So that should be everything. Yeah, that's everything on here. Oh, this antenna, this guy right here, this nut pops off. The antenna goes over this hole, then the nut goes inside the cover. And screws on to keep it secure. This is just the gasket to keep it tight so it doesn't loosen the vibration all over the gasket. Okay, next, this is this is an easy connection. This is the telemetry antenna to talk to Mission Planner on the computer. That's this guy. He will come through that hole right there. So just you just hold it up and then screw this on like that and then there's this this also has a rubber gasket to keep it from coming loose okay this is the battery that powers the pixhawk this this tells you what voltage everything is at right now and then you can tap this button to change at what voltage the alarm will go off so right now the alarm will go off at 3.1 volts. Now that's a cell voltage. There's three cells in this battery in series. So if, and you don't want any cell to get below like three ever. So, um, the, uh, yeah, that's this, I haven't set it 3.1. Okay, so this battery has this connector. I think it's called XT60 and that plugs into this. It's easy, it's male to female. Okay, um, then the power comes into this. I don't know what this is, some sort of voltage adapter or back or something, and that powers in here. And then you power the Pixie by coming out over here. Um, and uh, this is the Pixie right here. This is the output cable. It just comes out here, and I've wrapped it underneath. 
and uh, it is plugged into serial 4-5, as you can see, but also power. And I put this adapter on here to plug into there. I think that is everything. Oh, this is the arming button. Okay, so after you turn on the pick sock, this will be flashing red. Then you have to press and hold it down until it's solid red. Now, you'll notice when I turn on the uh, this switch here to on, uh, there's a light that comes on in the status LED. Now, right now it is like 50% bright green. When you turn on the pick sock and this is flashing red, that's the case. But once you hold this down and it's, it's solid red, this will get to 100% brightness. So you'll see this get brighter once this pick sock is armed with this arming switch. So I don't think I'm missing anything. I'll come back to anything if I did. Um, yeah, oh, the, the, this buzzer terminal is broke. See how the terminals that are empty look like this? Well, this has this stuck in it because it got broken there. So the Pixoc doesn't make any sound. You just have to go off the LED to figure out what's going on inside of it. Um, for more information on how to make this chassis, um, go to Super Droid Robots and look up their ATR like axle stuff. Okay, I'm going to show you the process of turning everything on. There is a certain order I do things in. So, okay, just kind of make sure all the cables are inside. Lift this up. Line it up with the holes. Okay, looking good. So, I will usually start with just the receiver and you just kind of have to fish your hands in here and look through this top window to make sure you line up the proper wires with each other. If I was a better electrical engineer I would make it so that you could only connect things in, in the way that would work. You know those connectors that are one way but you could potentially connect them opposite and fry something so just be careful when you're putting things in. Okay, those two are connected, then I'll come and connect in the uh, GPS slash, or the backup GPS slash um, compass. And we're not, we don't get GPS signal in the building, so I'm not going to bother plugging in the Pixie, but normally you just take this, screw this front hole down here and plug it into the Pixie. Now, I plug in everything and you'll see things flashing. Okay, bright blue is good, if I remember correctly. Different things mean different, different flashing signals mean different things and you can look that up. Okay, so now I'm going to turn on the motors. And if you can, sorry, this is so wobbly. Oh, motors were already turned on. Usually I like, to... so I just hit the switch off and on. Usually I like to turn them on after the pick sock is on. But we still don't have power because this guy. So you hold it down, press and hold it down. Okay, usually it works. There it goes, just had to push harder. And now that light is brighter. Probably can't tell, it's okay. And also you can't really tell, well you kind of can. This is flashing red. Once I turn on the transmitter over here that I'm doing off screen, this should Okay, 
So now there's a green light in there. <coughs> so I think we should be ready. Right off the bat, we can just... Right now I have it set up so that this is forward. And then this one controls left and right. Left. Right. Now there's a setting that I have, if you'll watch this. Um, when I go full throttle, ready? It took, the motors didn't instantly get all of their power. They wound up. There's a, I think it's called like baud rate or something. I can't remember. You can look that up in the Pixhawk settings. You can do that. I just did that so that the motors aren't snapping to full ex velocity and slowing down super fast. And so that would be easier on the motors. Um, but if you want really precise control, then you can change that. And the reason why I use two different sticks. So most people would have this be forward and left and right. But when I was all the way to the right, and I went slightly forward, and if I was just trying to turn, I wasn't trying to go forward or back, um, I'd be to the right, but sometimes my finger would go like this, forward and backward, just very slightly, and then I noticed that would cause the motors to change directions really fast, and that was just more stress on the motors than I wanted. So just for development right now, I have them on separate sticks. So yeah, as you can see when you turn, it doesn't have that slow acceleration like when you go forward. I don't know how to make it different from turning, but... Alright, that's getting it to work there. I didn't plug in the LiDAR, because the LiDAR right now is not working over wireless. It's only working when you connect. Sorry. The LiDAR works on my computer when you connect it to the computer. It works great. When you connect the Pixhawk to the computer with the like USB cable, it still works, but when you do what we're about to do right now, where you connect the Pixhawk with the telemetry connection, the LiDAR does not work, so uh, that's something that needs to be troubleshooted. But, uh, yeah, so now let's connect. <coughs> Here we have, like, the sister pair, you could say, to that antenna right there. Okay, this is the base station antenna, and I have it connecting there, it's just a USB port. So we come here and we open up Mission Planner. I haven't done anything, I've just opened it up. Use my mouse. And we're gonna come up here. We're gonna see what comms are connected. COM 10 is what we want, because that's the only COM on there. And if I remember right, for wireless telemetry connection, we want 57,600. That will normally automatically update to what it should be, but. So if we hit connect, it says Mavlink connecting, trying to connect. Getting parameters. There it is, it's getting all the parameters on the Pixlock. This takes uh, less time when you're connected, when you're doing this connection with um, a hard, like an actual wire. All right, I apologize for the technical difficulties. I ran out of memory on my camera that I was using, so I decided to use a screen recording software called OBS Studio, but um, I was uh, experiencing difficulties. So some of this, every time I click and like a dialog box opens or a drop down list opens, the software didn't record that. Um, I should have used a different, I uh, should have just recorded the whole desktop instead of just trying to record the mission planner task. So, apologize for those. I'm going to do the best I can to use um, um, uh, this video editing software to point out to you what I'm talking about. But uh, I don't think it'll be a problem as long as you have mission planner open in front of you for you to follow along. So, um, okay, you can hear in the background, the robot's up and running. I'm going to show you now um, what I've shown you before when the video cut out. So this would be, um, I believe it's this, 115,200 baud rate. 
if you were connected with the actual USB cable, but we're not. We're using the telemetry antennas, so this is what we're going to use. You click connect, and it starts connecting, obviously. Okay, so now it's loading all the parameters from the Pixhawk onto the um, onto this program, RG Pilot. Now, uh, you want to make sure you use Mission Planner 1, not Mission Planner 2. I haven't really used Mission Planner 2 much, but Mission Planner 1 I've had left. All right, you can see there's all sorts of errors. It's because we're inside and the GPS can't connect to any satellites. And so normally this would show you level horizon. Okay, so <clears throat> let me show you. You come to Configure Tuning and you go to full parameter list. So these are all of the parameters. Yeah, I'm just scrolling down. There's just tons of parameters. Inside the Pixhawk, you're, you're actually talking to the microcontroller inside of the Pixhawk, and you're assigning values to bits, and these tell you what those bits do. And um, yeah, so this is in the full parameter list. If you're looking for a very specific parameter that you can't find, then come here. But if you're just doing any other thing with the parameters, and you, I like to come to the parameter tree. So for example, here it tells you these are all the parameters involved with arming. So we come here, arming check. Right now it's, it's set to zero. So it's not going to check anything before it arms the motors. Um, since I was doing development, that's what I have. But when you actually are in the field or this is like some sort of final product then you know you'll want to check that your compass and gps lock are working before you can arm the motors um and you can do all sorts of things so i don't want to dive too deep into this um, really you just need to read the documentation and experiment and figure out for yourself but one thing i do want to talk about which took a long time and if you go through the rg pilot mission planner guides on setting up rg rover it does help you with this, but I just want to make sure you know. So RC map, this is where you set what channel does what. So if you'll remember, going back to the video about the pix or the um, transmitter, I'm coming here to page. Let's see, I want a uh, roll pitch. Um, yeah, page five on the transmitter where it said the mixer. So it's mixing channel one as the aileron. Okay, and aileron's on a plane control roll. So you wanna make sure roll is set to one. Now it thinks that I just, since I just selected one, it highlights it in green because it thinks I changed something. If you ever change a parameter, you have to click write parameters and so that it sends it from the computer to the Pixhawk. Otherwise, you're not actually gonna change anything in the Pixhawk. And if you are in development, something very good to do is you hit save to file. You can back up these parameters. Um, so like you can see here, uh, let's open this parameter file. These are all the parameters. Oh, sorry, you, you can't see it. Um, I don't think my screen is recording that. But um, anyways, use this save to file and it just saves a text file so that if you have your robot working and you want to change some parameters, always back up the parameters first. So that if something goes haywire, you can you can use this load from file to you know revert to your previous thing. So I'm not sure what else I want to say about parameters right now. Really, it's just you just got to throw yourself into it and you'll um, get to know the things that you need. Um, when you go through the um, instruction manual for using the Pixie with the uh, Pixhawk. You'll like come here to GPS, auto config. Um, I can't remember if we use auto config. Um, GPS type, type 2. If you want to tell it what kind of GPS you're using, you can set that here. But that's all in the manual, so parameters I'm not going to touch on anymore. Yeah. Um, okay, so if Let's say your robot is all working. How you do autonomous navigation is you come here to flight plan and you find some field or wherever you're at and you just click. I'm just left clicking right now 
where you want to go. So this is the first waypoint, second waypoint, and you can see it in table format down here. Now let's say at point, in between point four and five, or sorry, let's, you, I just, you can just drag waypoints. Let's say halfway between five and six, I want to take a picture. Sorry, halfway between five and seven, I want to take a picture. I make a waypoint in between them, waypoint six, come down here, and you can actually have it do things like um, do gripper. That's not a picture. Um, I thought there was one that said um, something about shutter. Yeah, there you go, set camera trigger. So this would like trigger a camera that you have hooked up so that you can take a picture. And I haven't done anything with these, but I know you can do, you can trigger third party computers and cameras and robotic arms and things like that using this box right here. Um, this waypoint radius is set really high right now. You wanna set it at one meter, that's the lowest it can go. Um, okay, so when you have your file, your waypoints that you want, then you would click right waypoints and it's uploading them so now they're on the pixhawk and um i'll show you uh with the picture of the transmitter what switch you need to click but um you can click a switch and then the robot will just automatically start wherever it's at it'll start to go to home and then from home it'll go to one then two then three then four and it'll go all through it when it's done at eight, it'll come back home. Okay, now, if you want to load waypoints that you didn't select from this screen, let's say you selected the waypoints from, or let's say the waypoints are coming from like an Excel table. The drones gave you a, a list of all the waypoints of sick potato plants. You could just come here and write load and click load waypoint file. Um, so that's how that works. Okay, um, there's a lot, I'm just, this is just real rough. Okay, there's lots of documentation on this already, so this is just real rough. Um, oh yes, I was gonna show you next how to see um, a couple things. It's been a little while since I, okay. So when you're setting up your transmitter, you come here to initial setup and radio calibration. And so right now I'm moving the left throttle all the way up or the left stick all the way up, left stick down, left stick right. So you heard that, right? So this is just showing you, you know, right now they're all in their zero positions, but as I move the stick left, that roll at the top, you know, shows it goes to the left. Okay, now here I have ra uh, radio seven. And when I click a switch that I programmed to be radio seven, it switches modes. And if I switch it down all the way, so this is down all the way, it switches modes again. This is in the middle, this is the top. Now let me show you how to program that switch. Um, I program switch uh, channel seven. Um, switch the switch is called SD. Okay, so channel seven is on connected to switch SD, and I'm honestly trying to remember how I did that. Um, radio calibration flight modes. Here we go. So flight mode one is manual. That means the you know Tyrannus transmitter is controlling everything. And flight mode four is smart RTL. Now, flight mode one is selected when your PWM is between zero and 1230. Now, going back to this radio calibration, right now it's between zero and 1230. So it's in flight mode one. Okay, let's go back to flight modes. It's in smart RTL, which means it will retrace its steps back to where the robot started. So let's say you're driving for a long time and you're just kind of manually driving around. You're like, okay, I want to drive it back home, but I, I want it to follow the path that we followed because there's obstacles. Then you would switch to flight mode four and it would retrace the steps. Now there is a limitation after a certain point, 
the Pixhawk can't store enough data to come all the way home. I don't know at what point that happens. It's never happened to me, but. So this is between 1491 and 1620. So we come to radio calibration. I move this switch um, to the middle and now it's in flight mode. Okay, let's go back to this auto. The flight mode auto is when um, you are you can't control the robot with the transmitter. It's just going to the waypoints. Um, waypoint one, waypoint two is going to go in order. When it's done, it's going to come home. So that's auto mode, and that's past 1750. So you come to radio calibration. I flip the switch all the way down now, and it's past it. Okay. Now, I still haven't answered the question, how did I choose um, uh, channel 7 and switch SD to be my, um, to the, be the PWM that these values are based off of? Well, I chose SD to be channel 7 with the trans transmitter. Um, that's, that's fairly simple. In that mixer menu, you just use the knob to rotate down to the channel you want, press the knob in to select it, and then on the source, change the source from S1 or to SF or SD, whatever, when you the switches, and, and you can find those switch names in the transmitter documentation. But um, that's how you select channel seven to be a specific switch. Um, and I... Um, now, how did we choose channel 7 to be what these values were based on? You come into the parameter list and change mode channel to the channel number that corresponds to the switch on the transmitter that you want to control those. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> so when you turn on the transmitter, the screen looks like this. Um, and then you come here to page. Oh, no, you don't. You come here to the middle button. Okay, so now you can flip through these 12 different pages. And if you go to channel 5, here are, our, let's see, channel 6. You want the mixer. You want, um, let's say you want channel 6 to be a certain switch. This is how you move up and down by rotating this. So we're going to select chapter six, channel six, by holding and pressing the button until this screen comes up. You can give it a name and source. Now, if you want this joystick to be on channel six, then you would select, um, you know, whatever roll pitch that you want. Um, otherwise, you so you select it by pressing this button and rotating what you want. So you, here's your like rudder, elevator, throttle, aileron, and then SA, SB, SC, SD, SF. These are all these different, so these switches. And in the manual, in the manual for uh, this transmitter, it tells you what their names are. Right now, I have this switch in channel 7. So let's just select whatever SF is. So I just click that button once to set it to SF, and you have all these other settings. You can change your trim, your offset, um, all sorts of things you can mess with. But you come here to exit, and now there it is. Let's say you made a mistake and you want to delete it. You just hold this button down, scroll to delete, and delete. That's all there is to it. So SD is this button. So what I was telling you before is right now this is moved all the way so this is down and up so this is manual mode one click is smart rtl which is like return to home retracing your path and then all the way down is auto mode okay i realized that i forgot to show you about the pixie and rtk gps so i've come down here and made this connection right here this black wire is just connected right there to the antenna and this fancy antenna wire connects to the pixie mode right here. Okay, and then after doing that connection, I plugged in power. Oh, my transmitter doesn't like me. 
Oh, I think it's getting low battery because it's been on for a while. Okay, so once you plug in power, the green light will just stay on by itself for a while, but then you want this pause, P-O-S for position button to flash. That means everything's working. Doesn't mean it's getting a signal from GPS satellite because right now we're indoors, we're not getting a signal, but it means everything is the way it's supposed to be right now at this stage. Okay, you come over here. This uh, is the setup for the base station, which this is in the Pixie, Pixie Multi um, documentation they give you when you buy it. Um, this is the blue, this blue board is called the evaluation board. Okay, so um, I'm going to unplug this radio because we're not using this radio. This radio is just for testing, or at least we're just, we just use it for testing. We, I'm going to show you how to take the signal, the corrections that are sent to this pixie from this pixie. And you're not, those corrections are going to be sent through to the computer, to Mission Planner, and then from Mission Planner to this antenna, to that antenna, to that antenna. And that's how you can achieve the super accurate measurements, or the RTK GPS with the pixie. So um, there's guides for how to do that when you buy Pixie. There's this RG, RG Pilot integration guide I've been talking about a lot. But uh, let me just kind of show you how to turn it on once it is all set up. Um, so you come here, you turn on your little battery. These are nice batteries. I think they give them to you. So there's our green light, which should start blinking here, probably about 20, 30 seconds. But, um, okay, so, oh, there it goes. They, they all turn on, great. So then you want this um, cable from the RS-232 port. Um, this gray cable is connected uh, right here. Okay, so once that's, everything's on and connected, um, I'm going to now record my screen to show you what happens next. Okay, I lied. We are not going to um, do that. I can't get that to work. So we're going to just show it with the phone. I'm sorry about the poor quality. So you come here to this Swift console program. Uh, yes, we want to make changes. All right, so on this screen, we know COM10 is our telemetry antenna that we connected to Mission Planner with. So we want COM3. Just leave the baud rate alone, hit OK. And now it is talking with the um, Pixie, the base station Pixie. And this says there's a new firmware version. We're not going to worry about that right now. If you were outside, you'd start seeing all manner of satellites be, being picked up on this screen. OK, so before we can go any further, we have to come back to Mission Planner. Oh, now that we're connected, what we're going to do in Swift console, sorry, let's go back to the main page. So this is what it looks like. You should be seeing lots of satellites. The Ardu Pilot Pixie Multi integration guide tells you there's like a certain amount of satellites that need to be seen here before RTK GPS is possible, so make sure you have that. I think it's like 16 or something like that. Okay, so come to the Advanced tab and come to this Networking tab. Make sure you have this IP address and this port number. These should all be correct from the last time I used them, but you know, double check yourself. And then you hit start. So now this is broadcasting to this IP address and this port all of the observations it's getting, which right now is nothing. So you'll come here to uh, the initial setup tab and then go to optional hardware to RTK GPS inject. Now you, uh, man it's been a while since I've done it, so I'm pretty sure you want UDB host and hit connect. Make sure this number aligns with the number on Swift console and hit OK. So um, showing an error right now probably because there's no um, GPS. I've never actually done this inside successfully or even tried to do it inside. So, uh, But when you're outside and you hit connect you'll see this link status 
and you'll see you know the BPS, the bits per second, start to rise. After you do that RTK GPS, this GPS, if everything works out, will go from like the regular GPS, I think it's called DGPMS or something like that. And then it, it will say, um, it will, if it's an RTK float connection, it'll say RTK float, I believe. But what you want it to say is RTK fix. And these blinking lights um, will actually change, I think, I can't remember. You have to go off of the guide, but that's the basic overview of um, how to do it. And I'm referencing the guide a lot because there's just a lot of information to put into a video. I'm just kind of walking you through it to help you with any confusing things from the guide. So make sure you have this ArduPilot Pixie Multi Integration Guide from Swift Navigation. A couple notes. Um, this is the adapter. There's a little miniature SD card inserted into the Pixhawk in the front end. So this is the adapter for that. And then you can use these two flash drives provided by Swift Navigation to perform the updates to the firmware on the Pixie boards. Okay, I found it. So I came to the full parameter list. And you can use this search function, search for fail. And I had looked right at it. It's this FS THR enable at the very bottom here. And so what it says is, um, well, I'll just read it. It says that uh, if the throttle value goes below a certain amount, then this fail safe is enabled. And so I have one enabled. So it's confusing, um, kind of. This throttle is like you saw the PWM values it's not just sending like a 0 to 100 um, analog voltage and that controls motors right it, it's sending a PWM signal that's measured in between like 0 and 2000 ish I think and it's only actually using a certain amount of that range I think I'd have to look into it I think it's like 500 to 1500 and uh, so this is just saying um, there's this uh, FS threshold value that it, if the um, throttle goes below that value for FS timeout seconds, then this failsafe is enabled. So if you didn't, if you wanted to be able to connect to the robot and then run the robot without the transmitter on, then you would just need to turn this to zero. And um, in my experience, if this failsafe is turned on, then um, you, you would think you could just turn the transmitter back on and it would get rid of the failsafe, but that hasn't worked for me. Uh, usually I have to power cycle or turn on the whole robot off and then back on, but maybe you can figure that out. So there you go. I'm gonna show you that I'm keeping this transmitter in this bottom drawer. Here's the awesome charger for your lithium uh, polymer, your LiPo batteries. Um, the charging cable, or the main power cable for that charger is right here, and uh, I'll just let you, uh, you know, Google it, find the manual, and, um, oh, here's the manual right here, and uh, make sure you read up really good on lithium polymer batteries. They are really easy to screw up and uh, destroy or render useless. Here's the first, so this receiver... The receiver that's in this red one, this red 3D printed part, looks just like this except it's black and it's um, called the X4R SB for serial bus. So I originally got this one but it wasn't working and I figured out it's because it didn't have serial bus capabilities. So. Um, oh, uh, while I have that here I'll just show you, uh, see, uh, let me get it out of its... Um, Let's get it. Uh, okay, so right here, you can't really see it in this video. Oh, there it is. It has one, two, three, four. Okay, if we take off these um, little guards, that one, two, three, four, it means the top three, the top left three, is all belong to channel one. So this top, so talking about the top row, this is the signal for channel one, this is the 
power, so I'm positive for channel 1. And then this innermost one is the ground, or negative, for channel 1. Okay, and then the top right three are channel 2. And then the channel 3 are the bottom right 3, and channel 4 are the bottom left four, 3. On the X4 RSB, channel 4 is your serial bus channel. So you have to be connected to the bottom left um, signals, pins. There you go.